All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 311 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller, and um, no visuals up for this episode. We're going to have a one-on-one talk. We have a straight talk. Um, no visuals up if you are listening on the podcast avenue. I usually have, like, visuals up or whatever the case may be for the show. Um, I don't have any of that up. It's just going to be me, um, but both of my cameras looking into the camera, and I want to talk to you guys. Um there is going to be a very interesting 12 to 18 months. It's going to be really, really interesting to see what happens. And uh, I want to discuss what are we facing, what possibly could happen, and uh, how we'll get through this. Um, if this is your first time here, um, I am VF Baller. This is the first and frame rate show. I talk about Atlanta Falcons and Georgia Southern football. Um, two things I want to talk about Georgia Southern football really quick, but before I get into that, I want to finish my intro. Um, like I said, you can find this podcast on various avenues. I said that before. You can find it on YouTube Rumble if you want to watch. If you want to listen to it, you can listen to it on iTunes, Google Play. You can listen to it on Stitcher, uh, Spotify, and Anchor. I appreciate you for taking the time to come over this way. I really appreciate it. Uh, and if you want to donate to the podcast uh, and what I do over here, all the links are down in the description below on the podcast or video avenue. Um, really quick, Georgia Southern, uh, real, real quick. This is not going to take long. Justin Tomlin is not on the team anymore. Quarterback Justin Tomlin. I kind of expected that because we don't have – um, space for him. Uh, obviously, I mean, we have a lot of quarterbacks that are coming to the school. Uh, we talked about that in other episodes, and um, he just – there was just no room for him. And uh, I don't think he played as well, in, but that's another story for another day. Also, Amari Jones is a full-time wide receiver, which is very interesting. And practice will be starting this week, so I will be covering more Georgia Southern stuff. So those are the two things I want to – well, three things now that I wanted to cover. That Amari Jones is a wide receiver now. Justin Tomlin is no longer on the team. Enough of all that. We're going to have a real talk about this. You already know what's going on with Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan has been traded to the Colts. Uh, I did a video about that earlier um, yesterday. And I thought about it after I made that video. And um, I, I'm still sticking with what I feel for the most part. This is going to be a really big problem. For the Falcons if they don't get things right. I think they still have things set up to be sustainable. But I think it's going to be a really, really tough road for the Falcons. And I want to know as a Fal Falcon fan, are you ready for this? I've been a Falcon fan for 19 years now. I will admit I did, I was not born a Falcons fan when I, I, I grew up in Georgia. But uh, it was so bad because I lived in Savannah, Georgia. They didn't even show Falcon games on television so to be honest i really didn't even know that atlanta had a team until the early 90s that's how bad it was so um i mean me being a kid as well all i knew was jerry rice and joe montana so i was a big 49ers fan start growing up but i wanted to root for the home team when i realized we had a home team and i've been loyal ever since i've I, I done went down to run down all the things we've been through from the Chris Millers of the world to the Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley situation. Everything in between there. Eugene Robinson, you remember him? <laughs> you remember Eugene Robinson? You know, uh, we all know about the Michael Vick situation. Joey Arrington, Byron Leftwich, Bobby Petrino. Man, I've been through it all because we've been through so much. And I've only been a Falcon fan, you know, since 93. I don't. I don't remember any other stuff before then, so I. I. I I'm not going to sit and say I was a lifelong fan. No, I wasn't. But are you ready for what's about to happen? Because if you haven't been following this team, it's been bad times here in Atlanta. And I'm not talking about oh you choked the game and you lost. It's no. It's been bad times. Our rival, the Saints, know what this feels like. And to be honest, they're probably about to go through this as well. Even though they have a better roster than us, they're probably about to go through the same thing where they win six, seven games. But we're looking at a situation now. We may be losing, or well, we may be winning lower than that. It, it 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 could be a really bad situation. And are you ready for this? Because I'm about to run down some things that, that 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 we're dealing with right now. Matt Ryan has been traded for a third round pick. Yes, that third round pick could be valuable because you have to not you. But you're gonna have to knock it out the park in the draft. But you know that's another story we're gonna talk about another time. But 
you are 62 million in dead cap right now. Now that's going to, you know, that's going to change in 2023. We're going to have a lot of cap money. That's cool. But I'm talking about 2022. That's in the title right now. So we're going to be dealing with the cap, cap health for 2022. Um, we were, we're not going to be able to like sign, you know, outrageous, but the, the, the top players that are available now, they're probably not going to come here because just Deshaun Watson didn't come here. Um, we did sign Marcus Mariota, which is, uh, he's okay. He's shown some flashes at at, at, at at Las Vegas when he was able to play. He did show some flashes. It's kind of like a redemption tour for him to see if he can do what he can do. But now he's going up against his rival, Jameis Winston, in, 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 in New Orleans. It's funny how that plays out. We went from Matt Ryan and Drew Brees, two Hall of Famers, to two guys who were supposed to be intertwined throughout their entire career based on draft um, status. And it kind of works out because they're still going to be intertwined because of their draft status. Playing with two teams that are hated rivals. That's actually, that's like somewhat of a silver lining, but we'll, we'll talk about that another time. We we signed Marcus Mariota for a two-year deal. Uh, we also have to deal with a brutal schedule next year. We're going up against... I mean, we're going up against the NFC West and the AFC North. We have to play the Cleveland Browns this year. But the AFC North is is pretty good. Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson, uh, I'll miss Trubisky, uh, whatever. Joey Burrow. And then you look at the NFC West, we got to go up against the Rams, which is Matthew Stafford. Go up against the Chargers, which is Justin. Oh, we're going up against the Chargers, too? I didn't know that. Well, we'll get to that in a second. We're going against the Los Angeles Rams, which is Matthew Stafford. Seattle Seahawks. Okay, Drew Locke. All right, all right. You got me on that one. Uh, Arizona Cardinals, Kyler Murray. Eh, okay. And who else is over there? The 49ers. Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, quarterback play, not too much. Teams in general, yeah, they're, they're tough. Now, in between that, they, they, we uh, based on what I see here on fbschedules.com, we got to play Washington again. Uh, we also have to play the Chargers, which I didn't know we played the Chargers. And we got to play the Chicago Bears. And that's funny. Kendall Vildor comes home to play. Interesting. Justin Fields come home to play. Interesting. Um, And also, we have our rivals, the Saints, twice. Panthers. Not too much of a rival, but we played him twice. And we see Tom Brady twice. Tom Brady's licking his chops right now. Tom Brady's loving what the NFC South looks like right now. He's loving what the NFC South looks like right now. So we have to deal with that. It's going to be ugly. I I I I, I think we may win three games. And I'm not even looking at the schedule. And I'm not even going to go into that yet because we don't know what the whole team is going to look like after everything is said and done. But on paper right now, we may win three games. Are you ready for this long season? Are you ready to deal with the heartache and pain? Are you going to be one of those fans that continue to point on the sideline as this train wreck continues to crash at a very slow motion rate? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to blame everybody after the emotions die down? Are you willing to continue to chastise every move that is going to be made from here on out? Or are you going to be somebody who's going to watch football? Are you going to be somebody who's going to uh, critique everything that you see in a football sense looking at the eye test and see what players that are going to be here that actually may be fun to watch in a in a in a in a season where it's going to be a train wreck but you can still see some shining moments are you willing to do that are you willing to sit here and try to find the best in everything that you see in this season as a i i'm not gonna say what a, a real fan does because a real fan does you know critique 
and 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 actually point out the problems. But that's one thing to do is to point out the problems and critique. But there's some people just, just outright just want to you know kick a team or kick a, a, a fan while they're down when they're trying to enjoy their favorite team, no matter what type of personnel is on the field. Now, me, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at everybody that's going to play on the field. I want to see how well they do. I want to see how bad they do. I want to evaluate this team based on the eye test and give you my opinions on them. Now, it's easy for me to say that because I'm running a, a show, a podcast, or whatever the case may be, but you can do that as well. That's why I like it, the fact that you're here. I like the fact that you can use the comment section. Hell, even if you really, really disagree with me, you can cut on your phone, put on that camera, and make a video telling me, you know, what I what what where I'm wrong at. And that's cool. I don't mind, you know, real feedback. I don't mind that. I like to have that that I, I like to have that dialogue back and forth when we talking about real football. About what you see on the TV screen, what you see when you're at the games, what do you see when, you know, you you catch a clip of uh, of uh, of a game. I think that's where the that that's where the fun in all of this is. Yeah, you want to win. Fans are fanatics. Fans just want to win by any means. But I'm no football aficionado, but I love the sport. I don't know it all, but I love the sport. I love watching who does what in the trenches, who does what at defensive back, who does what at wide receiver. How does a quarterback manage a team? We got Marcus Mariota here that actually getting a starting job possibly. Depends on what they do in the draft. He's going to be a starting quarterback. What's going to be really interesting to see is what he does. What he does as being QB1 once again. It's going to be really, really interesting. Because I, I, don't, I don't know what they expect out of Marcus. To be honest, when nobody really knows what they expect out of Marcus Mariota. We, I, I, mean, I mean, I don't know. Is he going to be, you know, is he going to be QB1? Is he just going to be a placeholder? I mean, what are we looking at here? You know, I, I have no idea. I mean, when you look at, he played five seasons, four and a half seasons, basically, at Tennessee. His best season basically was the 2017 season. He went nine and six, completed 62% of his passes. Threw for 32, um, 32, 3,232 uh, 3, yards. Well, you know what? As far as a, a win record, that's his best season. But as far as efficiency, in 2016, he went 8-7. and seven. He threw for 34-26 and had 26 touchdowns to nine interceptions. That's actually pretty good. That's 2016. That's almost six years ago. The last time he played, it was at... Um, at Tennessee, he was two and four. He went seven and two, as far as touchdown to interception ratio. He ended up getting benched. My son is a mess, y'all. At Las Vegas, he played, uh, played one game, seventeen to twenty-eight, one twenty-six. He only had one. He only he only threw two passes in twenty twenty-one, which is understandable. Because, you know, you had David Carr or Derek Carr. So that's understandable. So he only threw two it, it, There's a lot. He's a retread, and there's a lot of tread on his tire, but I'm not sure it's going to work out. I don't think it will. But it'll be interesting to watch this. What does the other guys do? How does Kyle Pitts, you know, um, you know react to this? You're not going to have your quarterback anymore. The only quarterback you had in the NFL, yeah, been one season. But there's the only quarterback you had. How does he balance? How, how does he, you know, step up from the next season? I think this team, honestly, I think this, I think this offense may be a little bit more dynamic than we can give it credit for. Because Marcus Mariota can move a little bit. He can, he can, he can move a little bit. So this is going to be really interesting to see how this offense is going to be played out. But I just don't think with, I don't, I don't think that this team is going to be assembled enough to win games. Not with the, you know, going up against the AFC North and the NFC West. What do you think is going to happen with, you know, the running back situation? What do you think? What, what Which receiver is going to come in? Are, are you going to watch which receiver is going to come in and play? I mean, what are you really going to do? Are you going to just not watch and wait till we come back and win? Now, that'll be interesting. 
if you don't want to watch the train wreck, but when they, if they ever decide to start winning again, because 2023, which I don't want to get into 2023 right now, but 2023 is like a situation where they're going to have a lot of cap space and they can sign some players. And if that happens and they start winning, are you going to come back around? Does that make you a fan? I, I think this is something that we need to really think about here. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, who are you and what are you? Are you a, a fan of the player? You like Matt Ryan? You like, you know, Grady Jarrett? Which I think he should be traded at this point, but that's another story for another day. It's my phone going off. Sorry about that. Let me get that together. Okay. Like I said, I think Grady Jarrett should be traded at this point. So, what type of fan are you? You like Grady Jarrett? You like Matt Ryan? You was a you you like Julio Jones? You didn't worry about the you didn't worry about the logo. You was worrying about the play. I mean that's fine, but just be honest. That's why I got this question up on the on the screen. Are you ready for a long season? Are you ready to deal with that, or you want to wait till one of your favorite players out of the draft? Let's say we get Bryce Young or um. Oh, what's the other quarterback from Ohio State? I can't remember. Olave or Olave or whatever. I can't remember. I'm not good with names. Nevertheless, you want to wait to one of those guys come in and then you want to shake your pom-poms again? I don't have nothing against it, but I can't stand that. If you're a team, if you're if you're a fan of the, of the player, that's cool, but that's just, that just something that just does not sit well with me because I expect a lot of Matt Ryan fans to be Colts fans now. Now I'll be the first to tell you I would I would root for Matt Ryan I I would love to see Matt Ryan have a uh, Matthew Stafford style season I would love to see that that man gets him a ring and I'm gonna be honest with you Matt Ryan may not play again if that happens if he goes to the Colts right now and win a championship he may not come back and I don't blame him as all the stuff he's been through 28 to 3 up and down seasons with the falcons you got that monkey off your back and win the super bowl i'm good i got an mvp i got all these uh got all these accolades i was off as a rookie of the year i'm good you know i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't blame him but i, I don't think he'd do that but I, I wouldn't blame him but i will be rooting for him but at the same time i'm like bro like man what what are we doing here as far as a team? Are we going to wait till a, a, a fan favorite? I mean, don't get me wrong. Fan favorite players do help create a fan base. I mean, that makes sense. That's obvious. That, that, that's very obvious that that's the case. You know, you look at Cordell Patterson. You look at Cordell Patterson. He's one of the reasons why some people do like the Falcons now. Because he's a fan favorite. They love going to the games to see the, the things, the pregame stuff that he does. But are you, you know, do you want more guys like that that are just likable or you just want the team to succeed? I don't want to see a situation where my favorite guys on the team are struggling. I, I Honestly, I prefer best of both worlds. I want to be in a situation where I'm able to be successful with the players that I like, not just having the players I like and want them to look good while we're losing by 10 or 20 points. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that's kind of how it was with the Michael Vick experience. Michael Vick was out here doing everything he could, and we won football games with him. But when we lost games, everybody was just still happy to have Michael Vick. You know, when Matt, it, it, it kind of flipped when Matt Ryan came. You know, when we lost, we just they, they pointed the finger right at Matt. And, you know, so what kind of fan are you? Are, 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 are you ready to have the deal with this very long 2022? But it, it, this is another thing. What if, what if they turn this around? Before I close, I'm getting to the 20-minute mark. I don't like to be too far with, the, with these shows. What if they turn this thing around and actually win some football games? Because you got to remind you, this, get, this team is not a bad team. I just think the other teams are better. All Marcus Mariota has to do is not turn the ball over. Literally, that's all he has to do. He does not have to turn. You got to understand. You look at the Titans, and I know the Titans are a better team, but they lost the their road to the Super Bowl 
because of Tannehill turning the ball over. If Tannehill doesn't turn the ball over, they, they're, they're in. You get what I'm saying? So that's all that Marcus Mariota literally has to do. Complete safe passes and don't turn the ball over. If he goes into the season and let's say he has maybe, through, I'll give you the, the most, seven interceptions, which I know this is far-fetched. I, you know, I, I'll raise it up even higher. If he has, no, no, I no, I'm not going to raise it higher. Seven interceptions throughout the season and complete a fairly high percent, I'll say maybe 67, 68% of his passes and only turn the ball over at the most seven times, you got a shot to win some football games. Because that's literally that he has to do. He could, he could just be a mobile game manager. What happens if that happens? What do you do then? It's just something to think about. But right now, realistically, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to be in a lot of trouble this season. But it's just something to think about. Like, what 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 do you do for the 2022 season? Are you ready for a season where you may not want to watch football? Are you excited to watch football? Are you excited to watch the Falcons play? I will give you my 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 opinion. I'm going to close on this. I'm going to watch every single game. And I'm not saying that because I do this show. Even if I wasn't doing the show, I would watch every game. I've been there when the Falcons was going through the Bobby Tr Petrino years and the Joey Harrington years. I watched every game. It was rough, but I watched every game. The Chris Redman years. Byron Leftwich. Come on, man. Where, 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 where were you? When we thought that Matt Schaub was a better quarterback. Well, I ain't going to say we. But when I thought Matt Schaub was a better quarterback than Michael Vick. When Michael Vick went down for a while. Have you? Were you there? I'm going to be watching every bit of this. Every bit of this. I remember the Jerry Norwood days. You know what I mean? TJ Duckett. Yeah, I, I, I mean, there's another running back. I can't remember. It was number 43, but I remember him too. You know? It, it, it's, it's been some ups and downs. I mean, this is about to be a serious one. I hope you guys are prepared. Let me know what you guys think. If you like this content, hit the like button. If you're on YouTube, if you hit the like button on Rumble, I think they have a like button on Rumble. Share this content. Let people know what we're doing over here. Uh, Georgia Southern Eagles, Atlanta Falcons is what we do over here when it comes to uh, doing uh, content over here. If you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button, like, share this content once again, like I said already. If you're on the podcast side of, of, of things, go over there and give me a five-star rating on the star chart. If you're on Apple, if you're on iTunes, uh, yeah, do that. Leave me some feedback as well. Also, um, if you're on any of the other podcast avenues, I think they have an auto download button. So as soon as this uh, any of this content goes up, it will automatically download for you so you can listen at your leisure. I really appreciate all the support, even the feedback. I love all of it. Thank you. The comment section, you guys are awesome. Uh, if you want to donate, you can click the links down in the description to donate. Um, I'm going to get myself together for the rest of the day. And... Uh, Get my son together as well. He's sitting over there. If he's watching the if you're watching the video, you can see he's behind me. So you guys enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. You guys be blessed. I will see you guys again on Wednesday unless you know something pops up and I have to make another video. All right, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Y'all be blessed. Peace. <laughs>